The next question is which of the following is not a principle of primary health care and the answer is it is to be delivered by doctors only this is not one of the principles of primary health care we saw that primary health care is an essential health care for the community and it had a lot of components it had a lot of principles but nowhere it was mentioned that it should only be delivered by doctors in fact we saw that we have a huge force of paramedical workers and ayush practitioners and there is a tendency to incorporate all these people into the mainstream so that you can have an efficient delivery of health services to the community so delivery only by doctors is not one of the principles of primary health care because going by this we would never attain primary health care we cannot post a doctor at every village per 1000 population and therefore this would then simply be a mirage the rest of them intersectoral coordination yes that was needed we saw intersectoral coordination was needed only healthcare personnel or doctors or nurses cannot carry forward the goal of health we need engineering measures we need legislative measures we need financial measures so we need a lot of things to come together and thus health can be attained so intersectoral coordination definitely is needed appropriate technology yes we need appropriate technology we want technology that is accessible and affordable to the people which is locally available more importantly community participation was also needed we saw that without the community being participating in the event or they agreeing to it the program would not run good and equitable distribution was one of the basic tenets of primary health care we saw that the social gap the rich and the poor that should not be existent at least as far as health is concerned the next question is out of the eight goals of mdg how many are directly related to health and the answer is 3 we saw there are eight there are eight goals of mgd and out of those eight goals three are directly related with health and the rest of the five are indirectly related there is no goal which is not at all related to health every goal that mdg has has a bearing on health remember again those goals are set for 2015 there are eight goals and there are various indicators we had discussed this it would also do good to just go through those goals here because they can be tested in the examination the next question is the first drug given by the health worker for ari is and the answer is cotrimoxazole the health worker who is posted at the most periphery can give cotrimoxazole we saw that and for older children chloramphenicol is given but the first drug given at the very periphery by the healthcare worker is cotrimoxazole again ari is an important topic you can expect a lot of questions out of ari one of the most frequently asked questions or something which is incorporated in the question itself and you need to know that is the rapid respiration so we saw more than 60 in under 2 months more than 50 in 2 months to 1 year and more than 40 in a child above 1 year to 5 years this was how we had distributed them and this is what we saw was rapid respiration so if the child in these age categories has respiration above the numbers that is given the child was called as having a rapid respiratory rate and therefore he was having a pneumonia and he had he was needing a treatment so the treatment basically the first drug that is to be given is cotrimoxazole remember it can be given at the periphery by the health worker these are few important points that you should remember with ari the next question is hiv screening for pregnant females in india follows which of the following strategies and the answer is opt out strategy we had seen that the recommended strategies list out of that list opt out strategy is the one that is followed what is opt out strategy opt out strategy is you are by default in unless you choose to opt out to be tested will you be forced to test for hiv no there is no force you cannot force a person to get tested for hiv he can opt out but by default he is tested of course pre test counseling is done consent is taken and the testing is done opt in approach is by default the test is not done if a person wants that test to be done for him what he can do is on his own volition he can ask for that test to be done 
if that happens then the test will be done otherwise it will not be done in india we follow the opt out approach so remember this this is again something which is testable and is liable to be asked say for example a patient comes to your blood bank to donate blood he has donated blood he went away and you found out that the blood is hiv positive should you call the person and tell him that he his blood has been found as hiv positive no you should not call the person and tell him because he was there just to donate blood you did not do some pre test counseling the person was not there primarily to get his blood tested for hiv so therefore confidentiality and ethics all those part comes here so a blood which was given purely for a donation basis if it is positive it is not reported so the approach that we follow is opt out approach definitely it is not randomly done we don't randomly test for uh, hiv in anc patients it is tested for everybody and the third option that is mentioned here is compulsorily done that is also not done you cannot compulsorily force anybody to have a hiv test done on him the next question is the introduction of asha has been under which scheme and the answer is of course nrhm asha is accredited social health activist and this accredited social health activist this post is created under nrhm you if you remember i had told you if you hear nrhm asha should strike in your head and if you hear asha nrhm this was a cadre of worker which was established under nrhm which was a scheme which was to be proposed under running to 2012 a lot of government funding was available under this scheme it was an umbrella program many of the health programs were under nrhm there was huge funding we also saw some of the parameters that asha should fulfill she should be a resident of the village that is the first parameter she should be educated at least 8 standard she should be educated at least up till the 8 standard that was the second parameter again these parameters can be relaxed if the right candidate is not available and she should be acceptable to the community she wishes to serve we also had seen her roles and duties was very long but contraception ors other mcs problems iron and folic acid tablets health education these were important functions of her she is also a dots provider so she has many roles and responsibilities these are the chief and the important ones something funny we noted there asha was a honorary worker she was a volunteer and she was paid no honorarium or she was not paid any salary so that was something about asha and remember that the post was created under nrhm the next question is in india under the prevention of food adulteration act what should be the level of iodine at the production point this has been repeatedly discussed in the class and the answer is 30 ppm the level of iodine at the level of the plant should be 30 ppm remember iodine is a volatile substance if you keep the bottle open or the plastic open iodine simply evaporates off and therefore the levels go on decreasing and hence the level of iodine at the level of consumer is at least 15 ppm these two numbers are easy to remember so please go ahead and remember them 30 ppm at the plant level and 15 ppm at the consumer level so these levels are for recommended iodine in salt please recommend that nobody takes non iodinated salt because goiter problem is a very big problem and also advocate for safe storage of salt how is that done we saw that it can react with a lot of substances so glass bottles are ideal for salt storage and those glass bottles should have a tight fitting lid if the lid is open and even if it is in the glass again iodine would just go off so a glass bottle with a tight fitting lid should be recommended for storage of iodated salt the last value here 2500 international units does that strike something does that make sense does that mean anything to you 2500 international units is the amount of vitamin a we add to the dalda vitamin a that we add to the dalda this is the quantity we add per 100 gram so 2500 international units that is another number you would like to know the next question is which of the following methods is used as a measure of contraceptive efficiency and the answer is options a and b what is used is both pearls index is used and life table analysis is also used life table analysis is basically a complicated statistical procedure it is used for 
contraceptive efficacy as well as it is used for insurance purposes so it basically tells about the longevity and factors affecting so therefore these are the two things that are used we already saw what is a pearls index pearls index is pearls index is this number of accidental pregnancies divided by the months of usage multiplied by the 1200 we saw that that multiplier came from 100 years so this is a measure we use very commonly for the measurement of contraceptive efficiency so remember this again can be asked next question is which of the following is not included in the spectrum of iodine deficiency disorder the answer is hyperactivity there are a lot of clinical manifestations for iodine deficiency disorder basically hypoactivity is observed hyperactivity is not observed we saw slow tendon reflexes we had cretinism you had mental retardation and a host of other diseases obviously goiter was there but hyperactivity is not included in the spectrum of iodine deficiency disorder remember hypoactivity is present hyperactivity is absent mental retardation goiter delayed tendon responses and cretinism are classical findings with iodine deficiency disorder how is goiter palpated stand behind the patient okay so that is again something which can be asked what is the sensitive indicator what is the sensitive indicator for the goiter problem or iodine deficiency disorder problem in the community that would be the new neonatal or the child thyroxine levels so these are some of the questions that you need to know what are the other methods by which iodine can be delivered it can be delivered by intramuscular injections of poppy oil which contains iodine so that can also be done but it is not a very good method because you have operational difficulties with sterilized injection practices and therefore iodized salt is a very good option the next question is the most common cause of infant mortality is and the answer is prematurity the most common cause of infant mortality in india is prematurity okay the, the low birth weight thing that we saw we saw that there is a lot of mortality in that group and this is the number one cause for infant mortality the next slide shows you the leading causes of infant mortality in india and they are number one causes prematurity you have acute respiratory illness you have diarrheal diseases congenital malformations and birth injuries so various causes for infant mortality in india but by far prematurity is the mostly the maximum killer disease or maximum killer incident the next question is which part of the room has to have the maximum reflection factor and the answer would be the roof we saw that the roof should have a fa reflection factor of 80 percent maximum light should be reflected from the roof and we wanted that the floor should have a less reflection factor so that we could see clearly the floor and if it reflects too much we cannot see the floor and in between was the walls and the furniture so roof walls furniture and the floor that was the order decreasing order of reflection factor and we wanted that the roof should reflect a lot of light and therefore we also discussed that it is better that if the roof is painted white so that majority of the factor from the roof light is bounced back so that was about the reflection factor with that we complete this leg of the MCQ session. I'll see you in the next class.